What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the first episode of how to set up a home lab. My name is Abe. Do not worry. Do not fear. This is the only episode you guys will see a PowerPoint within. The rest of this series is hands-on real technical training and learning. So why you are here? Well, you're wanting hands-on experience, you want to build out your resume, you want more technical know-how, maybe you've potentially studied and gotten multiple certifications like the CompTIA A+, NET+, or SEC+, but you still feel like you lack that hands-on knowledge and are uncomfortable getting your first job. Some of you might be here because you already are familiar with the term home lab and you're looking to self-host. Self-hosting is where people take their own services or subscriptions that they may normally have paid for and they bring it into their home and they start running those services in-house. In and that could also potentially lead to saving money. Maybe you have a lot of backups on your Google Drive or your Apple Cloud and you're sick and tired of paying for that subscription, but you want redundancy with your images, that will also be covered in this course. Maybe you're also changing into a new career field or you want to learn new technologies that you don't have the opportunity to use at home. You will learn that here. Lastly, and ultimately why I wanted to start this course is because you want to be able to pass a technical interview or maybe speak to other technologies to express that you are interested in this field and you do have some type of base knowledge and now they're willing to take the leap with you as a candidate. All right, what are we going to cover? So throughout this course, we are going to cover this. If we look from the top down, we start with the public internet. Then in this course, we are going to set up a firewall using OpenSense. After that, all that is going to be connected to an unmanaged switch. We'll briefly cover that, but we're not going to get too in-depth with that. And then we're going to go down this middle column with a server using Proxmox for our visualization. We are going to get familiar with Ubuntu Server Linux, which is a Debian-based distribution device monitoring, how to use a seam, how to create a VPN through Tailscale so you can actually connect to all of your services outside of your home, how to manage a DNS server, which is very common for a lot of sysadmins, Nextcloud for those backups, and then one of the services that we're going to cover is Linux GSM or setting up video game servers. In future videos outside of this course, I will dig deeper into plenty of services you can do in your home lab, but I felt like this technology stack right here would get you familiar with many things you'll see in the professional world and this is a little bit more focused towards home lab backups and professional environments that you could speak to in a job interview and then for the advanced portion of the course past the minimum portion that we're going to cover we're going to get into a second stages here with a backup server to back up these services slash a NAS and then failover within Proxmox and going over that technology. So if this server was to die, your services would fall over to this by using the virtual NAS to distribute those virtual machines over here. All right, so who am I and why you should follow this course or why you may want to follow this course is my name is Abe, as I introduced myself earlier. I hold a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in cybersecurity from Grand Canyon University and Western Governors University, respectively. I am a Marine Corps veteran. I have worked in this field for the last three years professionally, but I've been involved with computers and other businesses as side gigs for the better part of 15 years. I have held roles in government risk and compliance. I currently hold a role as a security operations center analyst, helping out a team that receives over 2 million unique users every single day. I also participate as a network engineer. Um, I want to teach this course because I want free and an all-inclusive training for everybody. I have been married for the past six years and my wife and I love to travel. If you know where this is and my picture, please go ahead and comment them below. I'm currently serving in the Air National Guard after leaving active duty Marine Corps. And don't forget to add me on LinkedIn. I'm always willing to answer questions, shoot advice, and you can always keep up to date with what I'm doing there. Ultimately, anyone can pass a theory-based test like things from CompTIA or ISC squared, but how many of you are going to fall apart in the technical interview? That is what I'm trying to solve or help you guys with throughout this course. All right, this course is not for everyone, and it does require a little bit of financial overhead. Minimum, you're going to need two PCs. Those could be mini PCs, normal desktops, laptops. Uh, they could be actual servers or 
x86 single board computers and an unmanaged switch to do the full stage two of this course you will need fork pc slash servers single board computers and still that one unmanaged switch here are some examples to give you an idea of what to look for uh, anything with the Dell Micro Optiplex series with an 8th gen or higher, I would recommend. You can see you can get these off eBay for really cheap. I've bought multiple for sub $60, even with a 256 gigabyte SSD. Zima board computers are another great example. They're an x86. They're a little bit more expensive, but they do have a somewhat underpowered CPU. So if you are um, wanting a little bit bang for your buck, I would go with that Dell. Here's another example of an N100 based mini PC, which is a current gen uh, CPU, low powered CPU, which will also be good for you European folks, where I know electricity is a little bit more expensive, and these can be had for around $60. Now you can get a five port or an eight port switch, but you can see these unmanaged TP-Link or Netgear ones on Amazon regularly go between $20 to $50. All right, so this can be free. You can build this setup for around 150 bucks, but once again, if you do have those criteria laying around and you're cool with wiping those things completely and installing their own software on them, you can do that as well. All right, so I'm glad you are here. Please select the next video in this playlist. And my name is Abe, and I am so happy to have you here with the LTH team to progress your career or your personal knowledge in IT and cybersecurity.